This is News Desk and a warm welcome to the program. Now, flag bearer of the main opposition New Patriotic Party, Nana Akufuado, has called for the implementation of the electoral reforms proposed after the landmark uh, Supreme Court hearing a year ago. Addressing party supporters in the UK, Akufuado said, the present voters register that we have in Ghana is bloated and anomalous, and there, are, there is an urgent need to make sure we get a new voter register before the next election on court now we look at some of the issues raised at this gathering of party faithfuls and to help us do that uh, I'm joined over the telephone by political scientist dr. Opoku Eju Opoku Eju welcome to the program yeah thank you uh, let, let's get into the speech. Uh, he's indicated of a bloated, over bloated uh, voter re register. Is that how you see it, even after we, we, we did the exhibition? I, I mean, whether the register is mm, Is that how you see it? Oh, yes, yes, yes I think so. And um, um, Nana is not the first person to be drawing our attention to that. A study was conducted by a team of scholars. Uh, including Paul Nugent, who specializes uh, uh, on African politics. And in this, they argue that uh, the voters register in Ghana is quite voted. So I think that's the case. And it's important for us to look at it rather than to continue to change. Wouldn't the, the step of uh, voter ex register exhibition uh, be able to deal with that, as we, we saw earlier in, in the year? Yeah, I think they should be able to deal with it. But the point is that they need to um, assure everybody and therefore include all the people. Dr. Andrew, what, what, what I'm saying is that uh, sometime in the year, we, we had a, a voter exhibition exercise. Couldn't that have dealt with the over bloated issues? Well, you know, I'm sure you remember that just after that, people called for uh, an extension because it was not uh, well patronized. And, uh, and so um, that was a very limited exercise. We need to do more than that to get it clean, if, if it is to be, you know, credible. What more should we be doing? You mean what else shall we be doing? Uh, absolutely. Well, I think um, the, this um, inter-party committee or whatever it is ought to be involved. And uh, the need to publish uh, uh, and the, uh, the, the entire register for people to see. Um, I think... Um, if the population of Ghana now is about 26 million and we have a voters register that has about 12 to 13 million, then that's quite broken because between um, less, uh, uh, this is a very youthful population and many, many people are below the age of 18. And so we need to find a way, and I'm sure if you look hard enough, we'll find a way to, to, to clean it up. Mm. Now, some have also suggested that perhaps the bloated register may not be our biggest problem. What, what are your views on that? Well, it may not be our biggest problem, but it's still a problem. Because you recall that during the Supreme Court hearing, this matter came up. And um, the question of, of our voting came up, and there were differences in the definitions. In fact, the Electoral Commission itself um, appeared not to have uh, any good you know, definition of what our voting meant. And uh, so it may not necessarily be uh, the biggest problem. It is still a problem because, uh, as I said, during the Supreme Court hearing, um, these matters came up. And so there's a need for us to clean it up so that everybody, those who will win and those who might lose, would accept the results of the election without making noise or even going to court. Mm. But, but the, the IPAC you expect to come out with ways of cleaning the register. I believe the IPAC has been meeting for, uh, it, it, for, for, for a number of times since uh, the, uh, the, the bid to c come out with proposals for the electoral reforms. It, it, if really, there are ways that we could clean up the register. What, what is it that the IPAC could do? Because don't forget also that the, the IPAC is not exactly binding on the EC. Yeah, it is not, but these are important stakeholders. And you recall that in the last sessions, one political party to the Electoral uh, Commission to court, and, and for course here, the whole country sat on tenterhooks. So it's, it's important that the IPAC is involved 
And as I expect you know, all the other political parties, with the possible exception of the NDC, have been talking about the fact that the voters register is voted. We need to listen to them. We need to ask them to come forward. And if Nana is saying that the MPP has a team that is supposed to work with the electoral commission to clean up, we need to accept that and work on it. Uh, once the, the parties themselves uh, are convinced that what we have is the best, then we can be sure that we have a very credible and peaceful elections. Mm. Let, let's look at the general electoral reforms. I remember that sometime in the year, the EC had... Uh, collected some proposals from the political parties as to the kind of reforms that will be needed. In fact, several conversations have gone on around that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I am not sure I have seen a, 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 any implementation yet. In, in, in another speech again, he's called for a speedy implementation. We all admit how important that is. But really, should, should we look forward to an implementation? Because I always come back to the point where it, it is not binding on the EC to implement what you're saying. How do we get the proposals implemented? Well, I mean, these, I mean, all these proposals have to look at dimensions. And I think everything will have to be done within the confines of the law. If the proposals that are being made are such that uh, we need parliament you know, to approve and so on, we have to do that. So first of all, we need to get all the proposals down. And then we need to see whether the conflict of the law or within the laws of the country they can be you know implemented. And I think the implementation becomes important because it does away with this whole issue of uh, mistrust, you know. And and, and and so I think uh the first thing to do is for the Electoral Commission to sit down look at but the proposal. Are there, are there any alternatives available for reforms to be implemented uh, without necessarily having to uh, go through the EC? Well, I mean, the EC is the one that is um, uh, entrusted with the conduct of elections in this country. And so one of the reforms that may be initiated will have to come from it, even if the proposals are coming from individual political parties and so on. Now, the point is that the elections are governed by laws. And so there will be the need to look at what the law says and see if those proposals being made you know, could be uh, unchanged or, or, or implemented. So I think the, the important thing to do now is to listen to all the proposals that are being made. And then, of course, with everybody's involvement, try to see if within the compliance of the law, we can uh, uh, um, do the changes so that everybody will be satisfied. Mm. How long should this take? This now, whole it's process. Not possible because you see, we are almost in 2015, and 2015 will be time for elections. So the campaigns are going to start, you know, pretty soon, and um, people are not really going to have the time uh, uh, um, to 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 be pushing these proposals. So once we have them now, it's better, in my opinion, if by the middle of 2015, all these proposals have been considered and discussed nationally and openly, and then put behind us, it will be better. We shouldn't wait till the end of 2015 and, 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 and still be talking about these reforms. So in my opinion, it should be as soon as possible. And as soon as possible, I mean, between now and the middle of next year, the reforms should be looked at and considered. Dr. Dr. Edu, I'm going to have you hold the line just for a bit. David Agbe is Executive Director for the Ghana Institute of Governance. He's joined our conversation. David, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you so much, Kameni, so and my best regards to Dr. Fukuedu, my lecturer. Absolutely. You, you've been listening in on the conversation. What are your own thoughts on what we've been discussing so far? Yes, uh, I must say that uh, Dr. Edu has um, delved in... in almost all the critical issues and we every Ghanaian support the idea that we need to reform our electoral process and, and so if this issue has come out again by opposition leader Nanado Danko Akufuado it's, 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 it's a common call that is being made by the, every Ghanaian based on the fact that we've all gone to court you know 2012 elections which uh, many people have you know complained about it and there has also been an academic exercise that suggests that um, our voter register has also been bloated. And so if we are looking at this 
uh, issues and doing proper assessment and all political parties are calling for electoral reforms here and there, let's all come onto the round table to be able to digest the issue and to be able to find out how best we can clean, you know, the registrar. Because electoral integrity is very critical in, in the context of Africa politics and all over the world, electoral integrity is very paramount because election could, could, could cost a nation uh, in diverse ways. So it is a good call. But the political parties itself, both MPP and NDC, must appreciate the fact that they are even fueling this kind of, you know, situation which is calling for the a, a, a bloated electoral register. Because when you, I mean, recently that the, the Electoral Commission opened the, the, this thing again, you, you, I, we saw some of the MPP people and NDC people, you know, pushing small girls and young girls who have not even attained the age of, you know, 18 years, you know, registering. Really? So you are, yes, that is what they were doing. People register. And, 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 and you know that you know years. that you know that for sure. Oh, yes, of course. Many people, some of them were even challenged Wait. at the polling station. Meanwhile, the, 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 the two main political parties were saying that, yes, those people have attained in the age of 18 years and all that. Some people even went to their schools to find out whether those people have attained 18 years or, or, or not. And so the political parties must also help electoral, you know, commission to be able to ensure that we have good electoral integrity. Uh, if they are calling for reforms here and there, and they themselves are not doing what is most practicable, then they are overburdening the electoral commission. So when you have a country with a population close to 26 years, and you have almost, uh, you know, 13 people or, uh, sorry, uh, 13 million or 12 million, you know, uh, having registered. I, I do not think that it is overbloated. We've also not taken into consideration of some of the re religious bodies like uh, Jehovah Witness people. They register during elections, but they don't cast their vote. And, and so there are so, other so, so for you, that we need to look for, at. For you, the, the voter register is okay as it is. Uh, as it is now, if you look at a population of 26 million, I would not say that it is overbloated. However, uh, I mean, there are certain things that we need to do to be able to, you know, change. Uh, for instance, people who have maybe passed away for four or three years down the line, which their name still exists in the electoral register. But, we need David, to all those but, but that, that's why we have the exhibition exercises so that those names can be cleaned. Yes. Yes, if we are so, doing so can we can we then say now. that that is being dealt with, or there is something missing? There could be something missing because everything needs to be transparent to the, the political parties. I, I think that things haven't been more transparent so to the political uh, how, parties. That is why how can we, we are do calling for electoral reforms here and there. How can we do it better? Because for me, we've been hearing this since uh, last year, and we, we still haven't found any solution to it or any, any long-lasting solution to it, we still haven't figured out, figured out how we want to even implement our reforms. So where do we even start from? What can we do? Kemeni, I believe that you know the solution. The best solution as we speak now is to ensure that every Ghanaian, you know, have the national identification card. If you have a national identification card, which is more credible, and everybody who attained the age of 18 years and is willing to cast his vote, you know, during election, should, should, should be allowed to cast his vote. So for me, the, the only antidote as we speak now is to uh, make sure that every Ghanaian has a national identification card, which will be able to use, you know, at, the, uh, at any polling station or whatever it is, to, to ensure that we, 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 we clearly identify who is a Ghanaian and who has you know, a certain, uh, you know, willingness to, to cast the but, but, but David, then, then again, how would the national identification card be different from uh, the, the uh, voter ID, we, the biometric voter ID we have right now? You see, the, 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 the bio data ID as we have now is not credible than uh, the... Who, uh, the national ID card. I think that the national ID but, but card... But how credible is, is the national ID card? The ID card that is 
barely accepted anywhere and we have been told we'll be, we'll be given new ones some time to come. How do we even give that one credibility? I, I think that in the developed world, what they use is their national ID card. If you attain the age of 18 years and the state institution says that, yes, you, you can cast your vote, that is what they use. So, I mean, we, there is no need for us to reinvent the wheel. What we need to do but, is but to... Wouldn't, wouldn't the solution rather be within having central data rather than relying on a national ID? Because then if we had central data, we could ascertain who could truly be 18 and above or not, who is dead, who, who should be out of the voter register, or, or not. Would, wouldn't that be the solution rather than looking into a card? The central data is a very solid one. I agree with you. But as we speak, that, we speak now that we do not have the central data now. The only reliable data that we, we could ought, you know, give a trust to it is the national ID card. For me, I see the national ID card as more credible than what we are using now. What we are using now, anybody could just come and say that I'm a Ghanaian and, and, and be able to cast his vote. But when you have the national ID card, which stipulates where you stay, I mean, your data, where your mom or your dad and everything will, will be well captured. So mm. you'll be able to trace your route. David, I'm going to have you hold the line now. Uh, Dr. Bob, where is it? Uh -huh. What's the national ID help us cut down on the excesses as far as our voter register is concerned? Well, you see, first of all, um, we, we have rather very serious health problems in this country, and we shouldn't um, overlook that. Uh, for example, elsewhere, um, residential addresses are known, and so people uh, register according to where they live and so on and so forth. That's not very possible here given the way our cities and towns are planned. But, oh, but we've started some street naming exercises. Pardon me? We, we've started street naming. Won't that help? Would what? I can't hear you well. I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm just drawing your attention to the fact that we started street naming. And perhaps yeah, that, that could help. It could be a step in the right direction. In the long run, in the long run, that will help. And that's very important. And so, as I said, um, elsewhere, like in the UK, it's very easy. Um, they just send the forms to the addresses and you fill them. If you add extra names, you are going to pay more in terms of the uh, poll tax and so on and so forth. So people do the right thing. Here it's quite difficult. But I think that the rules are very clear. It's only Ghanaians who are 18 years and above who can register. And even of these Ghanaians, your name has to be there only once. Now, if you are not a Ghanaian or if you are Ghanaian not of age, of 18 years, you don't have to you know, be there. I think the the way to deal with the problems, which are quite technical, now are two. One is the uh, kinds of cards that uh, Agwe is talking about. That may help. But again, the question is, how do we ensure that non Ghanaians, you know, do even have access to them? But I think we need to think about the second point, which is biometric, you know, verification. But uh, that seems to me to be the, the, the best way out of the crisis of the problem. Now, if the machines are working and they are able to detect if one person votes more than once and so on and so forth, we will be able to do away with people whose names appear um, on the list more than once and, uh, and so on. In the last election, the problem was, in, in most of the cases, uh, the machines were not even working and the people were allowed to be able to vote even without the biometric verification. An issue that came up strongly at the, letter, um, at the Supreme Court hearing so we need to ensure that the machines we're going to use in 2016 do work, are efficient, with no power stored on them, and that will be another way of dealing with the situation. Mm. It will be very difficult to have a, a register that is 100% clean in the kind of environment we operate. And so the best to do is to make sure that we have these cards and the biometric machines are efficient and do work on the day of elections. Mm, very well. Now let's, let's wrap up the conversation with this one. Uh, for Nanado, if we had 
we had an independent body that was implementing uh, this, unlike um, the, implementing the electoral reforms, unlike we have now, where the electoral commission is mandated to do it. Perhaps we would we would have had this. Uh, figured out already. We would have had our electoral reforms implemented, hitting, hitting the ground uh, running. But the, the, the question I, I want to ask is, uh, would, would that necessarily deal with our situation? Would, would that necessarily solve uh, the, 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 the electoral challenges that we have? Yeah, sure. I mean, if the electoral commission is going to work according to law, in the first place, the electoral commission has said, it is it, it, governed by laws, by the laws of this country. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about an, an independent body implementing those electoral reforms. Would that solve anything for us? Well, um, that might help. That might help, but I don't see why the Electoral Commission itself cannot do it if it is fully independent and law abiding. It should be able to do that. Unless, of course, we want to say that the Electoral Commission is biased, it, it, it covers this or that group, and so on and so forth. But as I said, if its point of reference is the law, and if it deals with the situation as objectivity demands, it should be able to do what any independent commission would do. And, and, and what if it is not able to carry out reforms independently and genuinely, then we cannot even trust it to organize our elections then. So it should be able to do it. And if it's not able to do it, then it shouldn't even be there in the first place, because we can't. Uh, uh, um, traffic to uh, conduct mm. three Right, David, I'll, I'll let you have the last word. Yes, I, I think that uh, Dr. Opukwedu has said, you know, many, many, many things. But I think that the political parties need to, you know, collaborate strongly with the Electoral Commission and, and, and cooperate with them, I mean, peacefully, so that we can reform the system. But they shouldn't shift everything onto the a electoral, you know, commission. The political parties must show readiness to ensure that they 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 they, 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 they help us transform the electoral processes. Right. I'm going to have to say thank you, uh, gentlemen, for your time here on the program. I've been speaking with David Agbe's executive director for the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. I also spoke with political scientist Dr. Upukuedu. You're here on News Desk. The show returns shortly.